A big hello to dear students and all friends and I welcome you to the next video of this series of palpation of swellings. In last two videos we have seen about the assessment of temperature and tenderness over any swelling. And if you have not seen them you can get their link in the description. So let's move ahead with the next assessment in palpation of swelling. After temperature and tenderness the next parameter which should be assessed in a swelling is its surface. We already talked about this feature in inspection. Benign tumors and cysts, they usually have smooth surface, while irregularity is mostly suggestive of some malignancy. But this is not a strict rule as exceptions are always there. Surface of any swelling can be easily assessed by gently rolling the palmar surface of fingers all over the swelling. Well, at this point, I must remind you that it is only the temperature of any swelling which is best felt by dorsum of your hand. Otherwise, rest everything is best felt by the palmar surface. Well, the surface can be felt by your fingers as smooth or irregular and sometimes, especially in cases of large swellings, you may get a mixed pattern where at some part surface is smooth while at some other part it is irregular and that is the reason why you should roll your fingers all over the swelling. Well, surface is a feature which is seen as well as felt. It is a common finding in inspection and palpation. But still, palpation is more informative than inspection. Let us understand it by an example. Now here you can see a mass with irregular surface. It is looking like a malignant tumor. Now imagine that it is covered by a thick layer of fat and fascia over it. Now in this case, what will happen? On inspection, you will see the surface of swelling as smooth. But when you will do palpation, the secret will be revealed and you will find that the surface is not smooth, it is irregular. So here because of the depth and covering of this mass, the findings of inspection and palpation both are different but still correct. And that is the reason why palpation is a better method to assess and confirm surface of any swelling. Next assessment in the series of palpation is of margins of the swelling. Now at this point I must say that in case of a swelling, edge and margin both are same things. But these two are quite different in case of an ulcer. In ulcer, margin is the junction between ulcer and normal epithelium, while edge is the tissue between margin and floor of the swelling. We have already seen about the margins in inspection of swellings and we have seen that uh, the, it is broadly divided in ill-defined and well-defined categories. Acute inflammatory swellings, they usually have ill-defined margins. While well-defined are again divided in two categories, regular, regular and irregular. Benign tumors usually have regular margins and irregularity is mostly indicative of malignancy, but exceptions are always there. Now at this point, I would like to draw your attention towards two interesting exceptions, hemangioma and keloid. Now these two swellings, they have got irregular margins, but they are not the malignant tumors. Now here I, I must say that the regularity and irregularity of surface or margins, it doesn't make a strict rule about the benign or malignant nature of any swelling. These features are only suggestive and you will have to see the other features to make the diagnosis. Now as we had felt the surface with palmar surface of finger, the margin is best felt by the fingertip. You will have to select any one point and from there you will have to walk all around the swelling especially to feel that whether margin is regular or irregular. Now just like the surface, margin is also a common feature of inspection and palpation. You can see it as well as feel it. But here again, the final confirmation is done by palpation. Now let us understand it by another example. I hope you can see a swelling on the forearm. This swelling has got well-defined and regular margin. It is hemispherical in shape and size is of about 
टू सेंटीमीटर नो दीज आर द फाइंडिंग्स ऑफ इंस्पेक्शन नो लेट इज मेक अ क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ दिस आर्म एंड इमेजिन दैट देर इज समथिंग लाइक दिस इट इज लुकिंग लुकिंग लाइक एन आइसबर्ग नो वट इज हैपनिंग हियर वॉट यू सॉ हियर द मार्जिन is in the inspection so here are the margins of inspection but when you palpate you will find that margins are totally different or in other words you can see here that after palpation not only the margin but shape and size because ultimately these two they are dependent on margin so shape size and margin all are changed after palpation now the margin and shape both are irregular and size is approximately 4 cm so what we have seen here that surface margin shape and size these are common features for inspection and palpation but in many cases the findings can be different in inspection and palpation but final confirmation is done in palpation now here i would suggest the students that if you come across any such case then please do not change the findings of your inspection because in inspection you have to write down what you can see now in this case i'll write in inspection that there is a hemispherical swelling on the forearm region of size of approximately 2 cm with regular margins but in palpation my findings will be different in some cases swellings are highly mobile so whenever you try to feel the margin they'll just slip away from your fingers this is called as slip sign and it is usually seen in solid encapsulated swellings very common examples are lipoma and fibroadenoma of breast in fact the fibroadenoma is called as breast mouse if there is a cystic swelling like sebaceous cyst or dermoid cyst it will not slip away but if there is a solid mass like lipoma that will get slipped away of your finger now after surface and margin next interesting feature in the series of palpation is consistency if i talk in terms of physics consistency can be defined as a degree of change in shape of any object which is caused by some external pressure now let us understand by one example this is a spherical ball and if suppose i apply some pressure at this point and if shape of this ball becomes like this so here what is happening there is some external pressure there is change in shape and i'll have to see the degree to which the shape is changed so these things will decide the consistency of any object many terms have been given but there are three basic consistencies soft firm and hard if there is a great change in shape it is soft if there is some change in the shape it will be firm and if there is no change in the shape at all then it will be an hard object now let us understand the same thing with some examples our lips and ear lobule they are soft little above our nose tip or pinna they are firm and the bony parts like forehead and mastoid they are hard because any external pressure causes great distortion in shape of our lips or ear lobule it causes some distortion of nose tip or pinna and it will not change make any change in the shape of forehead or mastoid process and some common examples are lipoma and myxoma these are soft tumors fibrolipoma and neurofibroma they are firm and some tumors like fibroma osteoma and malignant tumors carcinoma they are hard now here again as we saw in case of irregular surface and margin the hard consistency goes more in favor of some malignant tumor because benign tumor and cystic swellings they are usually soft or firm but if there is hardness please think of malignancy but once again it's not a strict rule as exceptions are always there now the hardness has been further divided in several categories like stony hard bony hard woody hard and many more 
But here I would like to suggest you one thing that in your viva please avoid using terms like consistency is soft to firm or firm to hard. Well here I understand that it is a subjective feeling and same swelling may feel different to different persons. For example someone may say it is soft while someone else may say that it is feeling firm. but still these terms are usually not accepted by examiners so it will be better to describe consistency only in terms of soft firm or hard the process of assessing consistency is quite easy here you will have to apply gentle pressure over the swelling by using your thumb or finger now i'll emphasize on this point that you should be quite gentle and i hope you remember the rule which i had told you in the beginning of the palpation series the rule of gst gentle sequential and time so whenever you are assessing consistency of any swelling you should press it very gently and you should be very careful in handling a tender swelling and that is the reason why the tenderness should be assessed quite early in the examination Now let us talk about some special findings that when you press any swelling then in some cases you may get some special features like if you are getting crepitations then it is suggestive of either gas gangrene or surgical lymphedema Similarly if you are finding that where you pressed there is a pitting then it is because of the edematous skin which is usually because of some inflammation And in one category the contents are so thick like in sebaceous cyst and dermoid cyst that you can mold the swelling in different shapes just like putty so this is called as putty sign or molding sign so these three features usually you get when you are assessing consistency of any swelling now as we saw in temperature while examining a large swelling so here again if you are examining large swelling then you should check consistency at multiple points because suppose it's a case of tumor and the consistency of this uh, swelling is hard but imagine that there is necrosis at some point so what will happen that at this point consistency will be different from rest of the tumor say for example it is soft Similarly uh, if there are multiple enlarged lymph nodes and there is abscess formation in any one of them so the swelling will feel firm at all places but at the point of abscess it will feel soft so this special difference it will be missed if you don't assess swelling at multiple points if you find that consistency is same all over the swelling then you can call it as of uniform consistency but if you uh, notice that there is variation in the consistency at some places then it is best called as of variable consistency now in the end just few words about cystic consistency now i'm sure that you must have heard and read about this term but unfortunately there is nothing like cystic consistency i'll explain you how Well you we all know that cyst is a sac which contains fluid inside it and the presence or absence of fluid inside any swelling can be confirmed by fluctuation test and we'll talk about this test in next video Now the consistency of any cyst depends on two factors number 1 thickness and number 2 tension of fluid inside it So there can be three possibilities. If fluid is thin and there is no tension, then this cyst will feel soft. But if it is thicker and there is moderate tension, then it will feel firm. And if tension is very high, then it may even feel hard. You can very well understand this difference with a common example of balloon and water. If you fill up water inside balloon then initially it will feel soft but when gradually you increase the amount of water it becomes firm and finally there comes a point when it is about to rupture on that point because of high tension 
it will feel hard so as you see here that a cyst has got no specific consistency and all depends on thickness and tension of fluid inside it and that is the reason cystic consistency is a popular but wrong term so i would suggest you to please not to use this term in your viva because many examiners do not consider it to be a correct term consistency of any swelling should be mentioned only in one of these three terms soft firm and hard which could be either uniform or variable So that is all for this video. I hope you liked it and if yes then please share it with your friends and subscribe the channel. We'll meet again very soon with another video on some more interesting features of palpation of swelling. Till then, stay healthy, stay safe and always keep learning in your life. Goodbye.